Hey, this is Mead McLean back again with uh, the Learn Art answer number three. Tonight's question uh, is a big one, an important one. Um, and the question is, where do I start? Um, I want to move into realism. Uh, do I start with the drawing the figure? Do I perspective, still life, landscape? Uh, what's the best track to follow? The uh, traditional track is to learn perspective and still life drawing, uh, maybe touch on landscape, uh, and then move more heavily into landscape and uh, and figure drawing. So, uh, I guess more than um, teaching anything about perspective, uh, I guess I wanted to go into why that trajectory is the way it is and why and, and how they all kind of integrate. Um, so let's not talk about it anymore, let's draw. So let's uh, start with some perspective slash still life. So the reason that you're gonna start with, with perspective drawing typically is that it's really logical you know you have your your horizon line you pick your vanishing point you make lines go to it um, and it makes thing makes things uh, seem to recede you know you draw a, uh, a building drop back the vanishing points drop your horizontals and verticals and it looks like you have a building sitting on the ground next to a road you know you draw your little road lines and there you go so um, that's a really logical thing but then um, in perspective kind of like is basic you know you just follow the rules it works every single time uh, it's fairly simple in terms of its rule structure but can get really complicated uh, as you go along and, and start to add more things in. Um, then perspective is going to connect to still life. Let, like, let's say I set up these uh, two little boxes of pencils that I have um, and I want to draw them um, and that's like my still life. I need perspective because uh, specifically two-point perspective um, because I have a box that I'm looking at and this box is going to obey the rules of two-point perspective and then if I want to put the other box on top of that I need to know kind of how that integrates Right, so to finish that, I just erase out. So that's the beginning of, of how perspective and, and still life kind of um, integrate. And you know, when you're drawing in perspective, you kind of get an idea of the the dimensionality, the three dimensionality of the of the space um, that uh, that's in a page. Um, and that three-dimensionality is like the toughest thing to learn at first because at first you're like drawing flat lines on a flat page when really what you need to be doing is using these lines to carve out space for your objects um, and that's like the single really like the only mental flip that matters in in your drawing at least as far as technique goes is being able to think in terms of three dimensions uh, and convey that on the page. Um, so, uh, you know, let's say that you're drawing an apple like I was doing yesterday, which is basically a, a, a sphere uh, for the most part. Um, but let's say that you wanted this apple to exist in space. Um, so what you would do is uh, if you're going to put it on in perspective here, 
you would draw your your sort of like uh, cylinder in which this apple would exist, um, and then within it you would draw your apple. Um, so this sort of defines like the the space of the apple because um, like you want to make sure that if you draw this apple next to a box that the box doesn't come inside the space of this apple, right? Because um, then it would cause these funky uh, problems. Um, it'd be like the like a section of the apple would be inside the box, projecting through the side. And so doing stuff in perspective sort of like sets you up for uh, doing a proper still life. Um, and then it also gives you an understanding when you're doing perspective drawings of planes. Like I can break down the the lighting in this sort of situation pretty easily. Um, I know that this box is is darker than this box. Um, so I know that all the values in this box have to be darker overall than these. Um, and uh, I can go ahead and, and start to break it down plane by plane, you know, like this is a certain amount of darkness, this is another amount of darkness, and then I can go in, in a logical way knowing, uh, knowing that from perspective that yes, this really is a different plane, uh, the light's hitting it differently, and this is how I interpret that uh, in a logical way. So, um, once you kind of delve into perspective and still life, you know you start drawing these these boxes and these these forms in space in all sorts of different proportions and ways. Um, you know sometimes you might want want your box to kind of like uh, to kind of twist uh, and and become a little less uh, a little less boxy and a little and a little more um, gestural, sort of like that. And that's kind of where the life drawing begins to come in. Because essentially life drawing is breaking down uh, the human body into uh, proportional uh, geometric shapes so you can uh, convey the space um, and the forms of, of the body. Like, uh, you know, we know that the, that the pelvis is uh, sort of it sort of like wraps around the back of, of the body and is sort of a little open at the front. But because the pelvis has uh, two points on it uh, in the front um, and then it has the sort of like V of the pubic bone here, um, we can approximate that along with flesh as a cube. So if you're looking at, at the pelvis from, from the side, say, uh, you might find like the front corner of the pelvis uh, goes across there. And you would begin to build, you know, a spine out of that out of that form. And you can do things like attach What's well, basically a cylinder on for the leg, right? Um, so this is how you would begin to like approximate, and the overlapping of forms is essentially what you're dealing with in still life, and that is going to translate as well. But that also uh, has to do with perspective. Um, so. It look, it's looking more and more like perspective is like this this foundational thing, um, and even though it is like kind of boring sometimes, you can create some fascinating perspective drawings, and you're going to need it uh, later, especially when you get into um, into like foreshortened sort of poses where you know you have like a hand coming out at you like that or a fist or whatever, um, and the rest of the arm receding in space. Um, so that's going to be especially important for uh, for um, that sort of that sort of thing okay so I haven't touched on landscape yet except sort of in a visual way in the beginning but let's say you're uh, you're drawing uh, you're drawing a landscape and um, 
you uh, you have like a river and some mountains or something like that and some hills. Um, you kind of know that your horizon line of your of your landscape uh, exists like somewhere around here or something like that. And uh, but you have uh, but you have some mountains in, in the background, some hills or something like that. So, but the question is, how do you kind of uh, make things recede in space? Um, you could have a bunch of sort of like overlapping, more rolling hills. You could have like a stream that's coming coming down in space from there. Um, and you know that because of uh, of uh, your linear perspective, as this sort of stream comes to you, it's going to widen and get bigger, and essentially follow a sort of like curvy path but still obeying the, the rules of uh, linear perspective. Um, and then let's say, or let's say there, there is like a row of trees receding back towards the distance. Thus far I've just been making stuff up out of my head uh, just because of convenience, but when you're actually drawing you really want to draw from life, especially at first, um, because what you're doing is you're programming your brain uh, to think in three dimensions. And if you're drawing from a photograph, you're basically taking a two-dimensional object and translating it onto a different uh, two-dimensional surface. Um, so you don't have the opportunity that you have when you're drawing from life to translate three dimensions into two dimensions. Because you have two eyes, uh, you can pick up that much more information when you're looking at something, uh, which is going to give you a certain like realism and life-likeness um, just by the fact of not drawing from a photograph or from a computer screen. Now, once you've drawn a bunch from life, then you can kind of make the transition into like drawing from photographs if you want, adding in information that you know should be there but doesn't show up in, in the photograph because the photograph is an approximation of the thing. Um, so essentially, you know, like if you were to draw it out, you're going, you're going 2D to 2D, right? Uh, if you're drawing from a photo, um, which is, uh, not what you want, but when you're drawing from life, you're going 3D into 2D, uh, so you're getting the, the benefit of that translation. So, but what really actually happens when you see people who are really good at drawing, at drawing photographs, um, is that they're going to take their two-dimensional information on the photograph, convert it into forms in their head, and then put it back into two dimensions on the page. Um, and then within that page, they're actually creating the three dimensions again. Um, so you're essentially like you know creating this this like back and forth between two and three dimensions and you'll notice that when you first start drawing and you draw from photographs everything looks two-dimensional because uh, you're not making that that three-dimensional flip in your head or on the page yet um, and those are some of the and so those are the four basic tools that can give you like the direction to go in so um, if it were me and I were just starting to learn how to draw I would dig into perspective, uh, draw like buildings, draw boxes, draw interiors and exterior spaces, um, go outside, you know, draw my room. Then I would get like boxes and stuff, like small, small things. I would draw those. Um, and then I would move on to like, uh, more complex, like objects like, like this, um, which you definitely could draw in terms of the rules of perspective, but it has like curves, and and planes on it so it would be a little more difficult you know but overall it's just this this sort of like long thin thin rectangle um so that's kind of the uh the basics of like the path of of learning realism um so perspective is the is the place to start um still life is is another place to start because uh, those kind of like go hand in hand and can be really translatable. Um, don't start off with anything like too complex, um, but, uh, but do draw from life.
Again, this is Mead McLean for AUSquared.com. Uh, this is the LearnArt subreddit answer number three having to do with uh, where do I start? Um, and I hope that helps. Uh, I know there wasn't a lot of technical information, but uh, we can do that in other lessons uh, if you want to do some perspective stuff. I've got some things already uh, already recorded and prepared, uh, which I just have to edit and put out. So you'll see those later.